I think by using neurofeedback to really enhance people's ability to experience these things in meditation and literally like make them addicted to meditation and want to do it all the time, um, there would be a very strong movement of people that are very well centered and very mindful and aware to solve some of humanity's greatest problems. Hey, it's Dr. Cody Rall with Tech for Psych. I've got this Muse 2 neurofeedback device on my head and the reason why is that in this video we're gonna talk about different terms and concepts from Buddhism that can help you enhance your meditative practice using neurofeedback devices like this. If you're interested in content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notifications when I upload new content. Really appreciate everybody's support. Let's dive right into it. So. This type of device, this Muse neurofeedback device, I feel like is really effective at letting you know when your attention has wandered from the breath during meditation. And when you take a look at different terms from Buddhism, there's actually really good vernacular there that describes the meditative experience. And what I think that uh, John Yates, Dr. John Yates or Chuladasa, like he, he likes to go by, has done so expertly in this book called The Mind Illuminated is that he's laid out different terms and concepts that will help guide people through meditative experience. Uh, in the book there's different stages of meditation and he describes what you might experience during those different stages of meditation. At the highest stage of meditation you're supposed to reach this tranquil equanimity feeling called shamatha and it's the state of just complete peace and relaxation. And through shamatha you can potentially have what he calls vipassana or what's called vipassana which is a profound insight into the nature of reality itself and through that potentially become enlightened the idea of being enlightened is having a profound insight into the nature of reality to the fact or the point where normal occurrences do not have the same effect on you as they do other people now, I'm not saying that everybody that gets into Muse Meditation should shoot to be completely enlightened, but I think that meditation and going through this process can really help people come to terms with stress, everyday stress and things that are coming at them to make them a much more effective and powerful person. So I already named off two different words from the Buddhism tradition that uh, help explain those concepts. So there's shamatha, which is the state of being that's really, really relaxed, peaceful, and uh, very balanced or has a state of equanimity. Or the vipassana, which is these insights, this, this logical understanding of the nature of things and how to hand the, handle them day by day. The actual process of meditation to get to these stages and these insights is where the Muse or other neurofeedback technologies come into play. So in order to reach shamatha, you need two different components. You need a regular meditative practice in which you concentrate on a meditation object like your breath and mindfulness during the day in which you are somewhat awakened and uh, very cognizant of different things that are going on. All right, so let's take mindfulness first. The, the term for mindfulness is sati. So if I'm walking around, it's good to have mindfulness. It's, it's good to be aware. And part of that is uh, gratitude. If you're focusing on the things that are going right in your life, that's really going to help with your mood and make you optimistic and feel like you have the strength and the power to continue on in your daily life and you know go for the goals that you've set for yourself. So having a powerful uh, sati is, is really important when it comes to the overall uh, look of your daily life when it comes to this type of practice, this Buddhism practice. And one of the things that John Yates described that I think is really interesting, especially for someone that's working in the mental health field right now, is that you cannot just have sati, you cannot just have mindfulness. Because with just mindfulness and sati, you actually can become quite scattered. If you're aware of everything that's going on around you without much focus, you're kind of a leaf in the wind. You don't really have a compass of um, keeping you centered so that you can move forward towards certain goals. There's, there's too much going on in our daily lives, too much stimulation, especially with smartphones, the internet, and all these other stimulatory devices where sati can actually get you into trouble, okay? so. There's, there's not much progression with sati. The other uh, distinction that was made with Buddhist term is samahati. 
So samahari is relaxed attention on a meditation object and we know that from uh, meditating with devices like the Muse in which the idea is to sit still and just focus on your breath and the neurofeedback program reads your brain waves, your EEG, and lets you know whether or not you've gotten distracted from the breath or not. And that's really the, the true power, I think, of neurofeedback in uh, one respect is that it lets you know when your mind has wandered from the meditation object, allowing you to achieve samahati. Uh, Muse took expert meditators, analyzed their brain data, fed it into machine learning, and this is the algorithm, the program that we're working with now. And it is my belief that these expert meditators um, through mindfulness meditation have really cultivated this very powerful samahati technique and that's what these neurofeedback software algorithms are letting us know that we're getting into. So samahati and sadhi, two different aspects to lead you towards shamatha which would ultimately allow you to experience vipassana and uh, become a very powerful person. All right, so let's go back to Samahati. Um, what John Yates does, or Tuladasa does, is he lays out these different stages of meditation. And as you progress through different stages of meditation, you experience the things called jhanas. So a jhana is a very pleasurable and peaceful experience that you enter in during a state of meditation. And I've described this in earlier videos of mine in which, you know, usually with my meditative practice, I do grounding exercises, I do body scans, I do some stretching, and then I'll put on the Muse headband, and then I'll uh, start a session calibrating in a certain way, get into the session and concentrate on my breath, and then I'll do different things like I described in uh, my last video about the Mind Illuminated in which I, uh, dilate my perception between having very narrow focused attention and dilated uh, focused attention, uh, dilation of my peripheral awareness. So attention and peripheral awareness dilating back and forth on the meditation object, um, practicing both uh, very strict samahati but then also branching off a little bit into sadhi as well as which I'm aware of my overall body and my surroundings and using that to sort of self-hypnotize myself into a deeper and deeper meditative state. And what happens is that as you get deeper and deeper in, your peripheral awareness kind of falls away. You, you experience things like a feeling of connectedness with the universe. And, you know, they documented that as something called hypofrontality. So the front part of your brain becomes very quiet. And the front part of your brain is what tends to let you know when you're separate from other objects. So that quiets down. So you have this feeling of connectedness with the universe. And also you get these waves of uh, pleasure. You actually get these energetic feelings and there's actually a Buddhist term for that it's called PD so you get these surges of energy through your body called PD and I really notice that when I focus on different focus points that correspond to the traditional chakras and like I've explained in my previous videos I think that has to do with different brain networks that are turning on and off depending on where your focus is and recruiting other brain networks to uh, a resonance pattern in which your brain is literally shaping the way that it's operating and recruiting different parts of the brain to enter this new New subjective state, this experience. And Chuladasa describes different uh, experiences as these jhanas, and there's a whole body jhana, there's a pleasure jhana, and there's a luminous jhana. And you can go through these different stages and experience these different feelings as you go. And where I think the Muse headband and neurofeedback technology is really actually very helpful is that when you enter these stages, it can be become very distracting. Uh, I, I like to describe it as like cave diving. Like imagine you're going down a little tunnel in a cave diving. You've got your scuba gear, you're in the water, and then you open up into this big expansive new cave and oh my god it's so glorious you want to look around maybe there's like crystals hanging from the rooftops and you know all these interesting things that you want to see. And that's what happens when you enter into one of these jhana states. Like it feels really good. The hair is on the back of your neck, stand up, and you're like, oh my gosh, I have just completely entered a new meditative state that I've not even experienced if like I've done drugs or something like that before or alcohol. And so you're looking around and really enjoying this. But uh, what Chuladasa says is it's important not to get distracted by this because you can become scattered and sort of lose that because it only lasts for so long during the meditation session. So it's important to bring your attention back to the breath even though it's so pleasurable, bring your 
attention back to the uh, breath because your perception, your uh, peripheral awareness has been dilated so much that you need to bring it back to the meditation object, to your breath, and really narrow in on that samahati. And I can tell you when you come into these jhanas, the neurofeedback on the Muse headband goes crazy. Uh, as you know, um, if you're focused on the breath, the uh, scene that you have selected becomes very calm and tranquil and you hear birds if you're uh, really focused for a good amount of time. Whereas if you get distracted, there's a lot of chaos, there's wind going, there's waves crashing. And so after you've entered a jhana, more than, like, more than likely the scene's going to be very chaotic. But if you recenter your attention on the breath, you can actually get back to the neurofeedback being very uh, quieted. Experience one jhana and you'll come back to the breath and then boom, you'll enter a new space and experience a different jhana. And what you'll notice is you experience these one after the other, but at a certain point you stop um, getting distracted because you stop having the energetic sensations of PD, you stop having the feelings of pleasure from the jhana and you enter just a very, very present state of awareness in which you're very peaceful and feeling like everything is okay, everything's chill and um, you just feel great because of it and I think that's what Chuladasa is describing as uh, shamatha. So as you go through that whole process of you know going through the grounding exercises, get into the muse meditation where you're practicing the samahati, going through the jhanas, you know fighting off the PD and getting into that end state of shamatha that's really what, where you want to hit the end spot of every meditation session. You know, that's the ideal because I can tell you it's very difficult to get there. And um, it's not going to happen every time. And sometimes it happens, it tends to um, depend on what's going on in your daily life as well. We're, we're going to talk about different concepts like that on Tech for Psych as well. What's going on in your peripheral life. But um, yeah, that's, that's the ideal. And when you're in that stage of shamatha, you can carry that through your whole day and uh, really enhance your ability to be a calm centered individual and a leader in your own community and you know we need them these days uh, you know there's a lot of stuff going on a lot of challenges for humanity and that I think by using neurofeedback to really enhance people's ability to experience these things in meditation and literally like make them addicted to meditation and want to do it all the time um, there would be a very strong movement of people that are very well centered and very mindful and aware to solve some of humanity's greatest problems, like Peter Diamandis would say. So that's the whole idea, uh, using the Muse Neurofeedback to enhance your Samahati, uh, so that um, you can use that Wasadi during the day and reach a state of Shamatha, and through that have profound insights about the nature of reality, the Vipassana, and you know, shoot for that ideal of enlightenment. So um, that's all I had for you guys today. I want to talk more about using neurofeedback on the side, traditional neurofeedback to enhance brain waves so that people can more effectively go through that process. Uh, really appreciate everybody's time. Talk to you again next time soon.